He's still full of Thanksgiving food. Y'all see that? I am a testimony to what I'm up here telling you guys about. I did it myself, even as an attorney, you know what I mean? It was easy for me to do, but it's also been so streamlined and easy for other people to do. If Sam in the front, the back of Massachusetts, if Sam in the front, the back of Massachusetts, Special. This is about the expungement seminar, man. Get your criminal background expunged by my attorney, Kashina Ross. Man. Hello, everybody, and happy Sunday. We here, 111th and Morgan. The seminar will be started shortly. I am overjoyed and can't wait to present you guys with this how to clear your criminal background record all on your own. You'll walk away with the information you need today. Today, Maybe another day, but for sure. today for sure. We yeah. ain't scared of the snow. It's not sticking if you ain't been outside. It's be all wet on the ground. We got salt down, so nobody gonna slip and slide. No liability issues okay, around facts, here. Okay, facts, so, That's it, so come on through. Yeah, make you know? sure y'all come through. You know what I'm saying? But for y'all on the YouTube channel, y'all gonna get all the valuable information. It's for free. But if you want her to do it for you, you want her to expand your criminal background for you, man. I'm going to make sure y'all have all our information in the description so y'all can reach out to us wherever you at, and we can lock it in, man. Appreciate y'all. Absolutely. Definitely appreciate all y'all coming out. We say all y'all, all six of y'all. We appreciate y'all, man, y'all time. You know what I'm saying? I'm Rico, so funny, man. I'm a Influencer, comedian in the city of Chicago, man. You know what I'm saying? Shout out to Karshi. <laughs> and my big boy Thomas, man, for having me. I appreciate y'all for sure. Man, we got my boy right here, man. Soul Seven. You know what I'm saying? He got some entertainment for y'all. You know what I'm saying? So he got the whole music. That's what he said. That's what he told me. But it's not, it's there for hood oldies. You know what I'm saying? So yeah, I'm gonna bring you up, fella. I appreciate y'all giving a hand. Oh, yeah. Mic check, mic check. Okay, with respect to all the queens, first of all, I wanna say that. Because I don't want no, no, it's not in a disrespectful way. So, um, this piece is called Jungle on Fever or Sunflower. Let me go in here already.
is on the clear pressure. It won't tip us fast, it's just fake, won't be fighting like Rio Athens. I'm at the clouds and the ladder, the fashion can pass. The ladder, the path, and the fall. Before all the rounds and the gather, the chapters for my own, my freedom, all my wall that I spatter. I humped it up before a country hunky, what I do for a, a relief for a passion to brown, but not open eyes. I quit the blood in the hash, I hit it just all of you classes. Fantastic, I will that turn it just on all of you bags. Huh? Side, you know, one of the main things that happens in the application, they ask you, they say, 
say, were you convicted of a crime or a felony or something like that? And so they say that, and then they say, well, it don't mean anything, but it really do. So once you click that you have been convicted of something, then the next question is, what is it? Then the next question is, then the next thing you get is an adverse action letter saying, we don't want to do it wrong because maybe you committed a crime or whatever it is or made a mistake back in the day. So the reason we wanted to put this together is because, now it, to me, the two just came together. And not only you know do we want to do our part, but we just want to start from the ground up and just have, let's just clear everything, let's get all of that stuff off the record so you guys can do whatever it is that you want to do with the rest of your life. You should not be punished for a lifetime for a, a mistake that was made five years ago, 10 years ago, 15 years ago, 20 years ago, 30 years ago, exactly. That's just crazy. So, you know what I'm saying? To me, it's, it, any, anything that you do, if whatever that punishment was or is, it should not be a lifetime. So that's that's the reason that we put this event together. Sorry, the, the weather guys wasn't good to us, but anyway, let's, uh, let's get this going. And I want to bring this young lady up. This is my partner. This is the other half of Superior Source, but this is also my partner in life. So, I love this young lady to death, and I'm just going to tell you guys that I'm not really sure, you know, what your situation was or why you guys are here, but I can promise you that she can help you guys get it taken care of. So, without further ado, let's bring up Attorney Marcia Rose. Think we deserve Hello, so I'm Marcia Rose. Thank you guys so much for coming and braving the fake storm that um, everybody else had a problem with, but. Don't fall asleep, y'all had the wonderful, delectable tastings of Nana Jewel's food in the back. Shout out to her for preparing all this wonderful food. So, in the other corner back here, we have Kalisha with uh, uh, Miss K. Monroe. She has some uh, nice little trinkets and cute bonnets and hats and fun things. So, if you guys have a few minutes, check her out. So thank you guys for coming out tonight. I want to also thank Rico Oh So Funny because he has definitely stepped up um, and supported this cause when I first mentioned to him that I wanted to do an expungement seminar and that I really wanted to make sure the expungement seminar was impactful and that it hit people really in the community. A lot of times people do things, but they don't do it in a place that's accessible for people who don't have cars and they make it that it may be priced out of people's price range. So with this event, the goal was to have a free event, but at the same time, give free information so that people can take it um, home with them and figure out what they want to do. So I got into this expungement work earlier this year when I was hired by Governor State University to work in their self-help legal clinic. They have received the grant to start the legal clinic and I was one of the first attorneys who worked in the clinic putting together the foundation. And one of the main things that came up from the residents in the south suburbs was definitely expungement and cleaning their records. So we worked really hard. We probably helped in a three month span about 100 people with getting their paperwork together and getting their balance done. So, this became a passion for me because I'm like, wow, so many people need it. And unfortunately, you don't realize you need it until it's too late. So for me, I ran across the same issue and I had to do my own expungement to be just totally transparent with you guys. Um, I had an opportunity in 2020, right during COVID, to get a contract for Amazon and I would have been able to be an Amazon ESP, which is a delivery service partner, have my own yard. I would have ran about 25 transportation vehicles for Amazon, picking up, taking, I mean, it's like a business in a box. Um, started the, went through the application process, three rounds of interviews, like, you know, I'm waiting, I'm like, oh my God, he is blessing me. Like, he was putting it together, it was falling in my lap so well. And of course, during that process, you have to do background checks and all of that stuff, but why would I have a problem? I'm a lawyer, right? I went to law school. There's no way that I could have anything that could be in my background keeping me back from getting this done. So I'm in the training class, online, second day of the training class, and the people are calling me on my phone because this was all during COVID. So 
by the time I took the call, they were like, yeah, well, sorry, you have to step out of the training class. I'm like, who? Oh, you know, yeah, I talked to the wrong person. And like, you have to leave the training class immediately. In some parts of <clears throat> employment law, they don't have to disclose to you why you didn't get a job. They just turn you down. And so they tell you, I'm sorry, you know, you don't have a position. And that's what they told me. After months and going through this whole process, I'm talking about we had payroll set up, like everything. I had the vehicles were being delivered, everything was ready to go. And I got that call saying, step out of the training class. So I was completely devastated. Um, like I said, this was in 2020, so very, very recent. As it went on, once I picked myself up, I'm like, okay, what's wrong? What happened? Why did this happen to me? I hired a private investigator. And I'm like, why don't you check my background? Check me out, take me up the top to bottom to see what's the problem. And immediately in a day, he called back. He's like, oh, I see it. You know, you have a criminal background. You got a criminal background. What do you mean I got a criminal background? He said something that happened in 1994. <laughs> with that, but they dropped the case. So they arrested me, of course, it was like a holiday weekend, so I stayed in the whole place. I was so broke down, I orange jumpsuit, like overnight. And they dropped the case, dismissed the case. So who would think in 2020 that I'm dealing with something from 1994, and especially over what? You know, I wasn't using it or none of that stuff. So at any rate, that happened to me check my background, that showed up. So now I'm in panic mode because I'm hoping I can still get this opportunity and complete it with Amazon if I can just hurry up and get this done. But at the same time, I can't take it, take any other person ever trying to look that up and find it on me. Like it's impossible for me to know that exists and I sit here and do nothing about it. So I just took action, found everything. Like I said, it was during COVID, so everything was done through mail and online. And Maybe six months later, I got the court order and everything got then expunged and erased off my record. So I am a testimony to what I'm up here telling you guys about. I did it myself, even as an attorney, you know what I mean? It was easy for me to do, but it's also been so streamlined and easy for other people to do. And so the goal today was to just walk you guys through what and what can be expunged? What can be sealed? What you are up against in this battle? And then from there, if we have any additional questions, well, I'll take questions and answers at the end. But I'll run through the PowerPoint. I think it'll give you guys a, a good understanding. Um, and then I'll talk as we go through it, okay? There are also people that are under correctional control who wind up in the same situation that continue long after a person completes their sentence that was issued by the judge. And since these punishments seem to follow a person for decades, years, they are called permanent punishments. Here are some examples of extrajudicial punishments, saying that you already punished and served your crime, but this is another layer there. You have problems in employment, you have problems with housing, parental rights, voting and jury service. You have problems with education, free education, public benefits, immigration, and also criminal debt. Now, if you or someone you know has a criminal record, there are legal rights that serve to provide protections for those individuals. I want to go over some of those legal rights you have when it comes to employment. Generally, employers are prohibited from using juvenile records, arrest records, and sealed or expunged records as a reason to deny employment opportunities, including promotions. Thank you. Thank you. Employers are also restricted from considering convictions. 
unless a substantial relationship exists between the conviction and the job, or if hiring a person would create an unreasonable risk. Like landlords, employers are also prohibited from using juvenile records, arrest records, and sealed or expunged records as a reason to deny employment opportunities, including promotions. to determine if you are or have a substantial relationship. This would be, one, how long ago the conviction occurred. Number two, number of convictions the person has, the severity and nature of the conviction, and how it relates to the safety of others. The facts and circumstances of the conviction, how old the application was when the conviction happened, evidence of efforts to, to rehabilitate. If an employer still denies giving you a job based on your record, after you prove the record should not have been considered, you can file a complaint within 300 days at the Illinois Department of Human Rights. If you guys want to take a picture of the numbers in the corner if anybody has an issue. The Illinois Department of Human Rights is a good source for a lot of issues that you can't really figure out who to complain to. Human rights kind of encompasses everything. So that's usually a place to start for complaints. I want to talk about the banner box. In Illinois, employers cannot ask on the application, have you ever been convicted in certain, in certain situations? Many employers cannot even ask about your criminal record on your employment application. Employers are allowed to ask about criminal convictions after they make a conditional offer of employment or they schedule you for an interview. So in a lot of applications where that question is there, it shouldn't be there. Ban the box does not mean employers can never ask the question. The law just says they cannot ask until later in the employment process. Employers that are prohibited from asking about convictions on the application can ask about your criminal convictions after they have determined that you are qualified for the job and either schedule you for an interview or make you a conditional offer of employment. This law applies to employers with 15 or more employees. So that's why it's called ban a box for big box stores. If you see an employment application that still asks this question, you can also file a complaint. I'm going to move on and talk about the Fair Credit Reporting Act. This applies when you know you check out your credit and on your credit report it has some things that may reflect your criminal background. So requirements for employers assessing private background checks. They must get your permission. They must provide a copy if they use that background check to make your decision about your employment. They must also allow for mitigation and correction before a final decision. So the credit report, people that see your email, they can ask this different questions. You also have rights under the Fair Credit Reporting Act. Employers must get permission to run a background check. You must sign off before they run the background check. Employers must give applicants, which would be you, a copy of the background check report before they deny a job or a promotion if the denial is due to the criminal conviction. That's the pre-adverse action letter. In Illinois, the employer has to wait at least seven days before taking the adverse action. If they deny you a job and tell you that it's because of your record, they must give you a copy of the background check report in a pre-adverse action notice, and they must give you seven days to respond. That will be called a mitigation letter. Under the Fair Credit Reporting Act, however, it doesn't cover a situation where the employer tells you they found a more qualified candidate. This deals with the rights in housing. So some people are denied housing based off of their background. So here in Cook County, the Cook County Commission on Human Rights passed the Just Housing Amendment, 
which started getting enforced February of 2020. So it's fairly new. And as it says there, landlords are not allowed to deny a housing application based on one's juvenile record of mere arrest or expunged and sealed records. Landlords can consider convictions that occurred within the previous three years and can only deny housing after an individualized assessment. We'll see what that is next. Is made to show denial protects against the risk to safety or persons or property. That last sentence just lets you guys know what the standard is that landlords have to abide by to say they don't want to keep the place. And they're saying that it would be a risk to the safety of persons in the building or the property itself. So your conviction was of such. So, but they're also supposed to ask these questions here. This is an individualized assessment. So the factors they would want to know, what was the nature of the, the, of the offense, how recent was it, what was the sentence you received, the number of convictions in the past three years, your age, when the offense occurred, evidence of rehabilitation, and then whether the conviction was related to your disability. This has been added because landlords was just getting away with this. Sorry. If you want more information, you can find, look on the Cook County website about this just housing amendment. The exceptions are people who are required to register on the sex offender registry and the current child sex offenders. They don't get the protections of the law under the Just Housing Amendment. So now that you're aware of your rights, let's review what you can do to remove your record so background check companies can't report them to landlords or employers. Taking a look at this, I used to tell people to snap a picture of this. This is very interesting when you look at it. This is how a criminal record is created. So if you look at the top left corner, that's arrested, right? So just off the top, when you're arrested, a criminal record is created, just right there. The next step would be the city or village or police department there who arrested you, that's their next in the chain the Illinois State Police, the FBI, and then the end of that is a blue box and it says RWOC. That's called, that stands for release without charging. So even if you got arrested and got all the way through to, to release without charging, a criminal record was created. That criminal record exists even though you felt like it was dismissed or you know, they let me go. So that exists. So that's why it will show up later, in my example, and you'll have to deal with getting it expunged. So release without charging, or you were charged in court, then you come down, then you'll be in circuit court, and then, or they can come from the left and file a complaint. So this tells you how the criminal record is created. It's important to note that your record can reside in four different places. So that's with the, if you're arrested, I'm sorry, if you are arrested, the police department, the Illinois State Police, and the FBI all have a record of your arrest. And that record continues to exist even if you're released by the police without being charged. If you are charged in court, the record now resides in the fourth database, which will be the clerk of the circuit court. Also, a criminal case doesn't always start with an arrest. If someone files a criminal complaint against you, like in that bottom left corner, then that will mean you are supposed to appear in court. And the court, the court will notify the Illinois State Police of the outcome, and the Illinois State Police will notify the FBI. In this case, the record will reside in three of those four databases. So when you apply to get expunged, they have to get expunged in all of those databases. Okay, so the city or the village, the state police, the FBI, and the circuit court. Y'all okay out there? Yeah. Yeah, okay. Is this boring? Okay, I'm busy and juicy, sorry. So dispositions. Every arrest or court case will end as either a non-conviction or a conviction. This is called a disposition. 
the disposition of your particular arrest or case is what determines if it's expungible or sealable. If you look on this slide, it shows non-convictions on the left in the, round, in the blue, and then convictions on the right. There's nothing under convictions right now. Non-convictions would be if it was dismissed, if it was acquitted, if you were released without being charged, or you got a sentence that's considered a non-conviction sentence. Some case, some, in some examples, some um, probations are. You can also end up with a non-conviction even if you were found guilty. This is called a non-conviction sentence. Expungement versus sealing. So here on the left is expunge, right? Big blue. Expungement is only for non-convictions. I'm only on the left side. Non-convictions are these boxes that are under here. Here is a list of non-convictions that may be on your record. These special sentences include supervision and special probations, like a 710-1410 probation for drug-related offenses. If you look under non-convictions again, all of those cases, if you are arrested and you wind up with tax probation, if you wind up with second chance probation, if you are in an offender initiative program, those are all considered non-convictions and all qualify to be expunged. Expunge, I tell people, e erase. Expunge is an erase in your background. The right side is for sealing. Sealing, as of August 2017, all misdemeanor and felony convictions are eligible for sealing. So on the left, we had non-convictions, right? Those could be erased. Convictions, however, can only be sealed. If you were convicted, and we look down this side, if you got jail or prison time, if you got probation, a conditional discharge, if you had time considered served, or even fines, those would all, can all fall under convictions. And if, it was com if you were convicted, your record can only be sealed. the difference between expunging and sealing. Expunging is erased and the only person who will be able to see it will be law enforcement. Period. No jobs, no nothing like that. So I answered the question too early. What's the difference in expunging and sealing, you might ask? At the top, no, no private or public entity can see expunged records. Expunged records are only available to law enforcement in cases involving qualified probations for first-time offenders. Next box. No private or public entity can see sealed misdemeanor convictions, dismissals, or acquittals. All sealed records are, are available to law enforcement. In the last box, sealed felony conviction records are available only to employers authorized by law to see them. These employers are regulated by statute and conduct fingerprint-based background checks. So now, not every non-conviction can be expunged, nor every conviction sealed. We'll explain which ones are eligible in the next slides. If a non-conviction sentence is completed satisfactorily, the case is eligible to be expunged except those cases. DUI, no. Somebody asked me about that. Reckless driving, no. Sex offense involving a minor, no. So the legislators fought to get a lot of stuff eligible to be sealed or erased, but not these. So if you got any of these, there's really nothing you can do that'll be on the record. All misdemeanor and felony convictions are eligible for sealing, with the exception of this list. Number one, domestic battery and violation of orders of protect, protection and stalking, no contact orders. That's just crazy. They should not be able to seal that. We should be able to know you're crazy like that, number one. Number two, violations of Humane Care for Animals Act. So anything against animals can, cannot be sealed. Sex crimes under Article 11, 
and then driving under the influence again, reckless driving. So those are the offenses that you, that will stay on your record if you commit one of those. They even say this means that serious offenses like first degree murder are eligible to be sealed. It's not on this list, believe it or not. Waiting periods. So, looking on the left, acquittals and dismissals, expungement. There is no waiting period following an acquittal or dismissal. Maybe you don't have to wait no time, you can go right in and file for your expungement. If you got supervision, two years from your successful completion of your sentence. If you wind up with a probation, qualified probation, five years from successful completion of your sentence. And then convictions under ceiling, three years from completion of most recent sentence. So if you've got multiple cases, you can't file until you finish three years from the last one. You can't petition the court. There's no waiting period to seal a conviction if the individual earns their high school diploma, associate's degree, career certificate, or go to a vocational school, get a bachelor's degree, or a GED while serving the sentence. So to your best interest, while you are um, serving your sentence or probation, to go ahead and earn this, because then you don't have to wait the two or the three year waiting period to buy your um, expungement. Drug test. If you are petitioning to expunge a drug-related felony, qualified probation, or to seal a drug-related felony, so if it's possession of controlled substance, manufacturing delivery of controlled substance, you have to submit a clean drug test when you petition the court, and it's got to be within 30 days. So a clean drug test result dated within 30 days of filing is required by state law. Expunging a dismissed felony drug case or stealing a misdemeanor drug conviction, you don't need a drug test. This was just about the Cannabis Act. Just so you guys know, cannabis is legal in Illinois. Illinois is trying to correct what they did wrong for those people. So a lot of people who had any cannabis-related convictions is getting, they get it done automatically. So under the act, the top box, minor cannabis, if you go to the right, it's an automatic expungement. So they clean your record for cannabis on their own. Minor cannabis convictions, they'll be doing a pardon. And then major ones, you have to file a motion to vacate. But it can get done. Um, this was just about juvenile records. All ju a juvenile record includes all arrests under 17. Since 2014, they changed it to all arrests under 18. So in some circumstances, a young person's case can be transferred to criminal court. If that happens, then none of this juvenile record stuff applies. They charge us in the dope. That's still about juvenile expungement. If anybody wants to talk about that, we can go into it later. What happens after file, and that's what I want to get to. So here's the process of what the um, petition looks like. So on the left, Stand up for a second. On the left, you see obtain rap sheet and your Illinois State Police report. We can start with the rap sheet. Don't necessarily have to have an ISP report. And then the next um, line says research records and prepare petitions. And then next will be the file a petition. The timeline there says a 60-day notice period. So once you file a petition, it's about 60 days before it get back with you. And the copies of your petition are sent to those four entities that we talked about earlier where your record is created, right? So it's created with the state police, the arresting agency, the um, village, and the state's attorney. So file petitions where we stop that. The next line says, if objection, appear in court. If not, your order is mailed. So like I told you guys, my order got mailed to me because it was so old and nobody objected to it. So if there's no objection, your order will be mailed. If there is an objection, you still have an opportunity to appear in court at an objection hearing. And then the court, arresting agency, and the ISP expunge and seal your record per the court order, and that's usually another 60-day process. This is just talking about what happens if your um, 
expungement or sealing is objected to. That doesn't mean it didn't work. You just have to go in court and bring more evidence. So if it's uncontested on the left, that means the state does not object, that means it gets mailed to you. It could be contested, which is the um, next box, because you didn't submit the drug test for a drug-related case. Um, the statutory objections, this petition case contains cases that are not eligible. So if you put it together and you put something in there like that DUI, they're going to object to that because you can't, you can't uh, remove a DUI. And then the last box is public policy objections. This is where a lot of people are running into issues with their um, considered carry licenses. The cases are eligible to be expunged or sealed, but the state believes it's in the best public interest for the record to remain visible so that they will be reported on background checks. The state can say, nah, we don't, we don't, we object to this again. And this person, we don't want them to be able to get a weapon or clear their record. We want that to stay on there because maybe it's first degree murder. Yeah, you could get it expunged, but they can object to getting it done. So just a little information, the judge, again, in the objection hearing, has a complete discretion. The cases are heard on Tuesdays and Thursdays. They heard them mark on one first and third uh, Wednesdays. So sometimes in that case, people have to come in and put together a case for you. Hello, good afternoon, how are you guys? Uh, I'm Paris, as you said, um, and I've been doing this for about 18 years. Um, my cousin stepped up to the plate and actually trying to help the community um, you have so many people that have things on their background and it's so easy to get off but it's really not because it's a lot of things that we don't know it's a lot of laws and things like that and then it's a lot of footwork that people just don't want to put in you know and starting off with this event today is a start you know for people to come in and say hey you can get the information we can do it for you or you can do it yourself um and then also when it comes to ccl license of hearing you have a lot of people that have things on their background and like she said, you go on with your life, you move on, you say, mm -hmm. you don't even think about it until you're in this class and you take this CCL class and then you get something from the state in the mail that says, hey, you can't, you know, get it. They have an objection. You're like, well, hey, a lot of people, when they receive that objection, they give up and say, that's the end of it. But that's not. They give you time. They give you 30 days to appeal that decision, but a lot of people don't know how to take the steps in knowing how to, you know, um, go through the process of having that, you know, motion go into the process of just appealing. It could be giving your disposition from the case. The state has access, they see everything, but they want you to provide the disposition. They want you to uh, write a letter and send in certain things. And a lot of people just not willing to do that. You know, and even after you do that, sometimes they still deny you. It's still not over. It's another procedure that you can go that we can help you out to go a little bit further when you go to the chance to bring in the Illinois State Police and, you know, everybody that's involved so that you can move forward. So there's so many different steps that information out here that they don't want us to know, but that's what my cousin is here, Karsheen, to give you that information, to give you that, you know, sauce that you need to make it out here to better yourself, to get rid of those past things in your old life, to move forward and be better. And that's what I'm here for, that's what she's here for. I'm here to help her so she can help you so that we can grow as a community, become stronger, you know, um, elevating life. That's what it's all about. You know, we have Rico that comes in, we got Thomas. So it's a team, and all of these people around us, we can all help other people. You know, it's about building, you know, and being great. And so I just want to say thank everybody for coming out. You know, and I'm giving my back, but these are some of the things that we offer. Take advantage of this information because it definitely can help. So I'm going to have us stay close back because I'm going to open it up for questions. Um, I know people got specific stuff they want to talk about. So if you got general questions or if you got something specific, this is a light crowd. So if you don't mind, I don't mind. If you want to talk in private, we can do that as well. So I appreciate you all for coming and listening to me talk. And we'll try this again. Thank you. Okay, you too, man. We just wrapping up the expungement seminar, man, with Karshina, man. She gave y'all a lot of valuable information. Make sure y'all take that information or come back to it on the YouTube channel. 
You can also go in the description, follow her on Instagram, hit up if you're trying to get your record expunged. A lot of more content on the way, a lot of more work on the way. Y'all know I don't stop working, man. But make sure y'all take that valuable information. I'm going to keep drinking my papaya. Like, comment, and subscribe, man. We out.